<laughs> hey, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you tonight. I am in St. Louis, Missouri, and that's why I love Zoom, because we can all connect no matter where we are in the world. Um, but just a little bit about myself. I am a classically trained harpist, and I started harp lessons when I was 10 years old. So I had classical training all the way through college. When I graduated from college, a friend was going through hospice care. I recorded a gigging cassette tape, and she used it for, to help her meditate and relax. That was the first time I had ever heard about music and healing because I'm classically trained. I'm a performer, right? We perform for the outside. So over the last, I don't know, 25, 30 years, I have been on this journey to kind of unlearn my learning because I was trapped. I was frozen in fear. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many of you have been formally trained, but my world was full of judgment, competitions, um, always performing for the outside. That's how I received, you know, my value. And yet I knew that there was something more. I could feel it. And, but I was afraid. I mean, when I first sat down without sheet music, I could not play two notes together because I was frozen in fear. I was afraid I was going to play the wrong notes, play it in the wrong key, didn't know the theory, or so I thought. So my spiritual journey inward paralleled my musical journey of unique self-expression. And that journey included some research that we did with um, a couple of my CDs. And, and the cool thing that I noticed, one of the CDs I recorded for my dad to help him heal. So that was my intention. I wanted to help my dad relax after prostate cancer surgery. Years later, we did quantitative EEG with that music and it showed that it was relaxing and calming the brain in four minutes. It was like my intention was moving through that music. Several years later, as I was getting more comfortable in my unique expression, um, I recorded another CD called The Magic Mirror. And I did not have any intention. That music literally woke up inside of me. My husband showed me ancient healing chants and it was like his voice created this highway and woke something up inside of me. And these melodies started to play me from the inside. It's like when you get a song stuck in your head and it won't leave you alone. So the only reason we went into the studio was to get that music out of me. So that highway, that sound was clear of any of my personal intention. Fast forward a few years later, we did quantitative EEG with five women going through um, cancer treatment going through chemotherapy. Quantitative EEG, me measure their brainwave frequencies, took the CD home, listened to the CD once a day for 10 days, came back to quantitative EEG again. Every neurological frequency tended to normalize. Nobody was the same as in the first CD, the first one where everybody's alpha frequency increased uh, and their beta frequency decreased, that's relaxing and calming the brain. With this magic mirror, everyone was different. And it was like they got personalized um, results from one piece of music. So how does that happen? I had to just figure out how I saw this music. Why was this happening? I'm the same musician, two different CDs, but two different highways of connection. So when I say that, um, I really feel that every expression whether you're writing or music or um, literature, cooking, touching, communicating, anything that brings that which is within us out into the world. We are creating highways of connection all the time. And when I say brings that which is within us out into the world, that's where the self-discovery happens. That's where our inner work happens. That's where turning the mirror and looking at our fears and looking at our beliefs and looking at, at all those hidden places that keep us from fully expressing our unique gifts. And I like to use the, I'm speaking a little quickly because I wanna stay on times, but feel free to, to reach out to me. I've got all sorts of articles and videos um, available. So um, we can ask questions later, but. 
So I use the harp as a visual example. Picture every string being a unique experience that we've had, or a belief, or a fear, or a feeling, or a joy, or a dream. Everything has this energetic um, uh, component, energetic signature, all right? So this harp has all of these strings that create the wholeness of the instrument. We have all of those experiences that we have ever had in our life present right now in this moment within our bodies. These tuning forks have their own resonant frequency. It's the frequency at which they most naturally resonate or vibrate or sing, okay? Our resonant frequency changes because we have so many individual vibrational frequencies inside of us. We're like this culmination, all right? And our feelings are a good indication of where we are vibrationally. So I'm going to strike this one. I'm going to put it on the harp so you can hear it. And then I'm going to put the other one right next to it. And this idea. I mean, everything, everything makes sense after I understood this. Okay, here we go. Did you hear it? Okay, I struck this one. It started to sing. It started to vibrate. It started to move through the air. Okay, the vibrations move through the air and it activated this one. And this one started to sing. If I had used a different tuning fork, it would not move because it's a different frequency. All right, tuning forks are objects. They cannot change their frequency. They do not have the ability to change. Um, but people, humans, wind, the um, plants, things that grow, animals, we can change our frequencies, but tuning forks can't. All right, this idea is called sympathetic vibration. When two objects of the same frequency come into close proximity, they create a resonant system. They begin to sing together, okay? So why is this, why did this just rock my world? I am this culmination of all these frequencies all these experiences. I'm a treasure hunter. I like to dig in. And we all have these, these really low experiences or heavy experiences, and we have high ones, okay? So a lot of times we resist going into those low areas within us, all right? That could be where we hold trauma or we hold memories of things that you know, in the moment that they happened, we just didn't have the tools to integrate and bring balance or understand what was happening. So they just kind of get stuck in our bodies. They get stuck in our in the cell in the cellular memory in our nervous system. Um, but they're there, all right. And a lot of times we want to stay up here in the high, in the high notes, in the happy place. But you know what? For me, the healing harpist, it is about embracing the fullness of who I am. And from this perspective, every genre of music, every type of creative expression can be healing. If healing is defined as coming into balance. One of the most powerful meditations I ever did was listening to the Halo soundtrack. You know, my, when, I, when our son, sons were young, we would listen to um, metal music going to school. You know, who knew there were so many types of metal music? You know, heavy metal, black metal, dark, death metal. I mean, it was just, and, and initially I resisted it, okay, because I perceived that music as angry and harsh. And honestly, it was just because I did not want to address that anger within myself. So I resisted it. But when I started asking questions, to, and, and I was saying like, what are they saying? You know, what are the words? What's the story? Then I started listening with different ears. I started hearing this music as an expression of another human being's life experience. I started hearing it as these mythological stories and these adventures. And then I was able to like open the space within myself and allow the music in and sympathetically resonate those aspects within myself, 
when I was ready to address some of the anger and some of the resentment that I was holding within me. So from this perspective, whatever it is that you are passionate about sharing, share it in your unique way. Nobody, nobody can share what you can share in the way that you can share it. I don't care if, and some of you may have had this experience, you know, you hear a piece of music and it is performed or played by different artists, but you can feel the difference because the highway of connection, that expression is bringing that which is within the musician out into the world and sympathetically resonating within the listener. So if somebody's very technical, you can feel that. It feels kind of tight. You know, I, I, as, a, as an artist, I understand um, expression from three different ways, from my mind, from a theory-based um, technical, I want to play it in this key, I want to, you know, do this tempo. Um, some people produce music with very specific intentions for the outcome. Sometimes they, uh, you know, they'll put binaural beats in, they'll do it as certain pulse because they want to entrain with the, the rhythms of the body. Um, whatever the production from that mental capacity, from that mental learning, knowing, all right, that moves through, that creates a certain type of highway for the listener. Another type of highway comes from the heart. It is like that emotional connection that you just, you just have to get it out. It's from that human experience, the love, the pain, the joy, the, the beliefs, the religion, the po political, whatever that expression is that binds us as humans with this emotional experience. And the other is the spiritual. It's like, sit down and let it flow through. That's when you're tapped into the muse, you're hearing it, you're listening inside, you're not creating it, you're not manufacturing it, you're just, you're just the channel that allows it to move through. And that creates a certain type of highway as well. So all three, all three highways are valid and can bring whatever it is to the listener when they're listening consciously. And um, so that's, that was just a really powerful insight that I had um, as I was moving through this journey of classically trained, don't take my paper away, <laughs> to, um, okay, I can trust and, and oh, what, what are those melodies? What are those notes? Okay, let me just close my eyes and get my hands on the strings and we'll see what comes through. And that's literally how I play now. I have no idea what's going to come through whenever I sit down. Um, and I could never have even imagined that when I first sat behind this harp and I could not play two notes. Um, so for me, it's a bit, for, for me personally, it was a journey inside. It was a journey to discover these aspects of myself with compassion and not judgment. I think we judge ourselves so much because we've been judged in a lot of situations. And for my students, we unwind that and we unlearn that by giving ourselves new experiences of sharing from the inside versus performing for the outside. And when we do that, when we just share from the inside, then we don't have an attachment to the outcome. And that's really hard for artists who thrive on that feedback loop. Um, but if you can, give yourself an opportunity to just see what that feels like, to just share honestly and openly because your human experience will sympathetically resonate on some level with whomever is supposed to find your gift and experience it. But if you don't express it, then nobody gets to experience it because that's your unique expression. <laughs>